Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. This is Mandalorian Flamethrower. Now before I test this thing out for real and all these cool subjects that I have, first let me talk a little bit about how I built this thing. Okay, so we are talking about the Mandalorian Vambrace, which is just one of the weapons that the Mando has in his arsenal. And for us to really understand how it works and how to replicate it, we need a really good clip, a really good look at how this thing works. So this is the best clip that I could find out on the internet of this thing in action. Now in the clip, this looks like your average flamethrower, but it is not, and let me tell you why. There's a few things with this that just don't really add up. The flame itself is pretty obvious, that makes sense. He's standing about 3-5 to five feet away from his target when he lets it rip and burns that stormtrooper to the ground. So we know that our flamethrower needs to be about 3-5 to five feet, that's how far it needs to shoot to be accurate to this movie clip. But there's two things that are just weird, they just don't add up. And one is the flame. Now if you follow that flame trail all the way back to its origin point on the Vambrace, it starts way in the back. And that just doesn't make sense because as the flame travels, it's going to be going across the Vambrace, past the hand, to the target. Which means that it's extremely likely that you'll end up burning yourself. If you have the flame going and then you move your hand towards it, those flames are going to wrap around your own hand, so it's highly likely that you'll end up burning yourself. So that doesn't really seem practical or make sense. The other weird thing is that you would expect to see some parts of a flamethrower when you're building a flamethrower or using a flamethrower, but that just isn't the case here. If you look really closely, you don't see anything. You don't see a nozzle or an igniter or a tank or a fuel line or any of the parts that you would normally expect to see on any type of flamethrower. Now I understand that it is a movie and I understand that it's science fiction, so it doesn't always have to be 100% real. I mean, I can just imagine what it'd be like if they were on set and then the guy was literally just ripping off a flamethrower every time they wanted to shoot that scene. It's probably a really big liability and kind of dangerous, so it makes sense that it wasn't real. But that makes it really hard to replicate. But if you know me, I'm kind of an overachiever. I wanted to make it look as close to that Mandalorian clip as possible. So my goal was to make a flamethrower you couldn't see. Even though it doesn't make sense, I just wanted it to be like it was in the film. So my goal was to make a super compact flamethrower that I could fit within the current Vambrace that you wouldn't see at all. I wanted to make it so at least you could hide everything in the design so it would look like it does in the actual clip. So to do that, I came up with a very basic design. Just all the, the flamethrower-y parts without putting it in the Vambrace first. And then I wanted to go out and test that design and see if it even worked. All right, so today I'm going to be testing the distance between the lighter and the fuel coming out of the fuel system so I know where I need to place everything so that the flames will react the way that I want them to. And we're going to get an idea of how this thing's going to behave and how it's going to operate. Alright, so I finally got everything put together and now I get to actually test it. So I'll be testing the flow rate of the gas and the lighter and see if the lighter can actually ignite the gas and test the positioning and everything. So today is a really exciting thing because I'll actually get to test it and see how well this thing works. 
if everything goes to plan, then I can finally put all the finishing touches on it and put the padding back in and everything like that. So, see how it works. Alright, so that actually went really well. I only had to make four adjustments before I found some settings that worked really good. Now I can actually get a pretty badass flame out of this thing almost every single time. Now all I gotta do is put some of the final finishing touches on this thing and add some supports and then we'll actually be able to put these flames to the test. So with the basic testing done, it seemed like this was going to behave about how I would expect it to and be able to replicate that scene pretty well. So the next step was just to finalize the design Put all the parts together inside the van brace and add some extra supports and braces to make sure everything is sturdy, solid, and safe. Which brings us to our final design. Alright, so here's how the final design actually works. It's pretty simple really, it only has six parts. So those parts are the fill valve, the tank, the solenoid actuator, the needle valve, the nozzle, and then the igniter. So the first thing we have to do is fill up the tank. To do that we open the fill valve and then with the butane pressed against the nozzle it allows the butane to fill that tank. And then when we close the valve and remove the butane it allows that butane to be sealed within this tank. Now a normal tank is usually a cylinder or a tank of some kind that's just all one large volume. Something that might look like this which would be really difficult to hide in your arm or around your arm somewhere. Instead, my design has a wraparound technique so that you would easily be able to fit a sleeve around the tank and have it conform to the arm instead. So it would make it really easy to be low profile and easily hidden. So that's the tank. We've got fuel sealed inside the tank. Next is the actuator. So that is an electrical connection that is controlled by one of the relays on the Arduino. So when the Arduino tells it to open, it'll open and then go next to the needle valve. Now the needle valve is another interesting part about this flamethrower because that setting determines how much gas comes out of this system. So a little bit, you get a little flame, it doesn't do a whole lot too much, and you've got way too much fuel coming out that it just blows out the arc on the arc lighter, and then you only get, you know, just fuel and no flames. So with the perfect setting we get a lot of fire and a lot of fuel coming out in the perfect ratio. So the next, we've just got the line that goes up to the nozzle, the nozzle itself, which is where the fuel comes out of. And then we have the lighter, which is another really cool and interesting part of this design. The lighter, the arc lighter, is a pretty unique device. And that allows me to remote control an ignition source for the gas that comes out of the fuel system. So the cool thing about it is normally when you open that lighter and you push a button, the arc creates enough heat to ignite whatever you're trying to light. Uh, in this design, I had to do a couple things with it to make it useful for this design. So I actually had to hack into it, take it completely apart, and then get it down to just the circuit board level, and then figure out how it works. And then replace both of the switches, the inputs on that lighter. There's one for the lighter cover, and then one for the button to charge it itself. So I had to hack into those two inputs with different wires that feed into the Arduino. I also had to add, there are these little wires that are actually what goes up to the face of the lighter to create those arcs. So I had to add some extension wires that would allow that to be placed further away from the body of the lighter. And I added this little clip, which allows it to be mounted exactly where it needs to be on the van brace itself. And then also on the inside, on the internal side, there is a small compartment to put the laser itself in so that it's removable because this lighter is also rechargeable, which makes it really good for this project as well. And then of course we can't forget the brains behind the whole thing. We have the switch at the wrist location, just like we used in the Whistling Rockets thing. I decided to use that again because in the clip, it doesn't ever really show what it does to trigger his flamethrower. And I wanted my hand to be out of the way anyway. So by pressing my arm down and away from the flame, it activates these inputs. Those inputs on the Arduino are basically glorified timers and relays that will 
turn on when they're supposed to. So when I push this button, simultaneously, it can turn on the lighter and the solenoid to let the gas out and hit that spark and create the flame. So everything is, again, automated with Arduino. And then we've got these mechanical components to make our Mandalorian flamethrower. Now there is something that I did a little bit contrary or different to the movie clip and that is I made the nozzle for the flamethrower a little bit closer to the front of the van brace just to reduce the likelihood of starting myself on fire. You know I know it's not like it is in the movie but I wanted it to be safe as well you know I don't want to start myself on fire so it is a little bit forward but it still conforms pretty closely to the look and design of the one that you see in the film. So like I said, the goal with this design was to make it as small and conformal as possible. So this design allows me to hide the entire thing under a sweatshirt or a large garment of some kind. Okay, so now that I literally just got done explaining how to build a flamethrower, I want you to keep one thing in mind. Now there's a quote from Jurassic Park that I really like, and it goes something like this. Just because you know how to do something doesn't mean that you should. Now in that movie, they were talking about resurrecting dinosaurs which is incredibly dangerous and not very well thought out but in this case I'm talking about the flamethrower just because now you have a basic understanding how this works doesn't mean that you should go out and do it yourself I don't want you to go out there and try to do this the same way that I did and have terrible results I don't want to be the cause of anybody out there getting hurt now with my projects pretty much everything that I build on this channel I'm gonna be pretty open about I'm gonna show you how I designed it I'm gonna show you how I went about building it and just the design and theory behind everything because I think information should be shared. I want everything that I do to be open source, but I don't want people to get hurt as a result. So use common sense. Don't use anything that I build in any sort of criminal or violent manner, please. And uh, with that talk out of the way, I think now it's time to do the final test. So here's a final look at the design and then let's go out and try it out.
All right, so that about sums it up for project number two of the Mandalorian series. So we have now completed the Mandalorian Flamethrower and previously the Mandalorian Whistling Birds. This project I think went pretty well. The only thing that I had trouble with was trying to use the flamethrower when it wasn't windy outside. You might have noticed that in some of the clips, I'm, a lot of times I'm fighting the wind, but overall I think it went really well. So we have the Mandalorian flamethrower and the Mandalorian whistling birds, and as many of you know, Mandalorian season 2 is coming out at the end of October. So I'm really hoping that I can fit one more Mandalorian project in before then. And although I am a fan of the Mandalorian series and all the cool gadgets I could make from the show, I've got even more cool things planned. I'm starting out with smaller projects like these, but I have much bigger things planned and that's where you guys come in because I need your guys' support and subscribers and, and the views and everything that I need so that I can get the resources and time that I need to build these cooler projects. And I'm not talking about little gadgets from movies and games, although I will be doing stuff like that. I'm talking about bigger things like a robotic exosuit, wearable tech, new technology, electronics, robotics, mechanics. I even want to build something that will allow me to fly. So help me show you guys what I'm really capable of in some of these future projects. If you liked this one, if you liked the flamethrower and you liked the whistling birds that I did before, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video. And if you guys have any cool ideas of things that you want me to build, leave a comment below and I'll take a look at it and maybe that'll be the next project that I do. For all of you that watched it all the way to the end, I really appreciate you watching. Thank you and I'll see you guys in the next video.